Praise the Lord. This is Sister Marilyn Belcher, and I'm the pastor of the First United Pentecostal Church here in Centerville, Alabama. And I'm thankful that you are with us today on this video. I know it's been a couple of weeks since I was able to do uh, a video, but as they say, I'm back in the saddle again. And, you know, on my own, whether it be physically, financially, uh, anything, I, I, I can't do very much. I, as a human being, I'm very limited in, in what can be done, but I know a God that can do all things, no matter what your need is, no matter where you're at uh, in your, your finances, no matter where you're at spiritually, no matter where you're at uh, maybe health-wise, I know a God that can do all things, that knows all things. He's ever-present no matter where we go. He is always there 24 7 so today i want to encourage you in the lord to look up and know that our Redeemer draweth nigh. We are so much closer to the coming of the Lord than we were three weeks ago when I made the last uh, video. Closer now than we've ever been. And one thing we've got to remember as we go about our, our daily task is that we better be listening for the sounding of the trumpet. We better have our eyes open because when he comes, he's coming in the twinkling of an eye to take the church that is ready to meet him. And so today, dear people, I plead with you to get ready to meet your maker. Today I'm going to be preaching on we are what we eat. And I'm going to take my, my scripture text from Psalms, the 34th uh, chapter and verse 8. And the scripture reads, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, uh, as I said, my, my title is, We Are What We Eat. Now, many times in the past, I have been what you would call a sweetaholic. Uh, I, I, I eat my dessert uh, before my main course, uh, I, and I'll take second helpings on that if you'd please. And, and I just love sweets. Now, as I've gotten older and things have changed in my life, I, I'm not quite as a sweetaholic as I have been in the past. But one thing is for sure. I love my hamburger. And I don't mean a cheeseburger. I mean a hamburger. And so I tell them all the time, now y'all don't mess up my hamburger. And so if I, if you want to say I am what I eat, then you would say I'm a walking hamburger. I'll take a hamburger any day if I can. My, my true love, as far as food goes, is shrimp. I love shrimp shrimp. I don't care how you fix it. I love shrimp. But guess what? I'm highly allergic to shrimp. I'm highly allergic to the shellfish, the iodine. It doesn't matter uh, whether it be uh, in, in, in no matter what form or fashion it's in. I'm allergic to it. So I can't have the shrimp, but I sure can have me a hamburger. But I want to, on the spiritual side of it, we are what we eat. Now, I saw a sign recently that really got my attention. And it, it states, I want to live like a caterpillar. Eat a lot. Sleep for a while. Wake up beautiful. And I thought, there's a lot to that. There's a, there's a deep, deep message in that. I want to eat a lot, sleep for a while, and then wake up beautiful. You know what we really need to be eating is the Word of God. We need to take the Word of God and hide it deep within us. And, and so, when, when I look at that scripture, the opening scripture, Oh, taste and see 
that the Lord is good. There's a lot of things in life I don't eat. I don't like anything green. I don't like vegetables. My idea of a vegetable is a french fry. A french fry can qualify for a vegetable because it comes from the potato. And, and I love corn on the cob. And aside from that, that's pretty well it. But many times people would say, oh, just taste it. You'll like it once you taste it. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. But the Word of God says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And it goes on and says, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Why don't you give the Lord a chance? Why don't you give the Lord that opportunity to serve him? He's the reason that we are alive today. He's the reason that we are uh, going about doing whatever we're doing. It is because of the mercies of God that he has allowed us to have another day to live. Over in Psalms 119 and verse 103, the scripture reads, How sweet are the words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. You know what? How sweet are the words unto my taste. The word of God, if we would eat the word of God, if we would feast upon the word of God. You know, it, 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 it's uh, is it, the word is what we're we're we're, we're we grow with. Uh, we we grow in the word. In the beginning, it, it's like a newborn baby with a milk, and, and then it's because we can't digest the the heavy things and and the things that's got a lot of meat to it. But God, in His infinite wisdom, has given us that time to to take of the uh, the milk of the word of God and then as we grow spiritually we leave the milk and we go into the meat of the word of God taste and see that the Lord is good we are what we eat if you're only doing the worldly things then you're worldly honey it don't mix it don't mix and that's one of the problems with the church world today. They want to say that they're saved. They want to say that they're sanctified. They want to say that they're filled with the Holy Ghost. But yet they're dabbling in all the worldly things around them. And then they wonder why seemingly they can't get a prayer through. They wonder why it seems like they don't have a true relationship with God. That it's so shallow. You are what you eat. And I got, I'll go a little further. <laughs> you are what you dabble with too. You, a, a, a sincere child of God is not going to care for the things of this world. A Holy Ghost, a true Holy Ghost filled saint of God is not going to care for the, the looks of the things of this world. You're going to desire more and more and more of God. You just want to be, you want to be saturated with Him. You want to be saturated with the power of the Holy Ghost. You are what you eat. And then in Matthew, the fifth chapter, and verse 6, the scripture says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's not, I want more of the world. I want more of Hollywood. I want more of this and I want more of that. It's more of you, Jesus, is what I want. I want people, when they hear me, to hear the God that's within 
me, when they see me, that they see the God that's within me. I don't want to identify with the world. I don't want to identify with rock singers and honky-tonk places and, and all this. I want to identify with Jesus Christ and the church of the living God. And over in the book of Jeremiah, in chapter 15 and verse 16, here he's talking about the word as the food. And in verse 15, I'm sorry, verse 16, Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, the word of God, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You know, when I was being raised, we were poor. I mean, poor, poor. But mama always tried to make sure she had enough, plenty enough to feed her kids and her husband and herself. And after we all ate, if we wanted seconds and there was enough to go around, we could have seconds. If we came in and, and we were hungry in between the meals, it might be a cold biscuit sitting on top of the stove where she kept them from breakfast. But we had a biscuit. Mama always tried to make sure that her babies had plenty to eat. The scripture says here, Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. It made me happy. It put joy within me. It put gladness within me. It made my feet lighter in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, you are what you eat. And so many people that they they are malnourished because they don't eat right. They're, they're so thin because they don't eat right. And, and, and some people have it in their mind. And they're, they're just as thin and frail can be. But they've got it in their mind. They're fat. And so they don't eat. They got more than just a physical problem. They got a psychological problem. Let me tell you, sometimes people think that they're on fire for God and they're malnourished because it's been so long since they really ate of the Word of God. We've got to eat the Word. We've got to get it deep within us. We've got to hide the Word in our hearts. The Bible speaks in one place about making fat the soul. It speaks about making fat the bones. He'll make us fat, spiritually fat, in the Holy Ghost when we eat of the Word. <laughs> Last scripture is Ezekiel. And Ezekiel, the Lord was telling him what he was going to have to do. The Lord was sending Ezekiel to the house of Israel. And he called it a rebellious house. He said that they was impotent children. And that they were stiff hearted. And he was telling Ezekiel. You got to speak what I give you. He said don't worry about their looks. Don't worry about their words. What they say to you and how they treat you. You don't worry about that. The Bible says there in Ezekiel, the second chapter, verses 8 through 10, he said, But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. He said, And when I looked, 
Behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. There was written therein lamentations, mourning, and woe. He says, so I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat. Fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. You want to really be something in God? You are what you eat. You are what you take in. Take in the word. Take in more and more and more of God. And the word of God. Just take it in. Become saturated in Him. Don't worry about what this world says. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. You just take in more and more God. And the more you take in, the more that you will be like Him. Heavenly Father, we come before you at the end of this message. And Father, help us all, each and every one of us, God, to hunger and thirst after righteousness. You promised us, God, that if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, that we would be filled. Help us to be what we eat and help us to consume more and more of thy word. And we give you the glory and the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen.